Grateful before the things that you've done for me that has nothing to do with anybody, it's been you. I'm grateful for the things you brought me out of that others said I would never make it, but I did. It's been because of you. I'm grateful for circumstances that Satan had me trapped up, wrapped up. I thought it was over, but you brought me out. I am grateful. When I think of my life right now and how blessed I am, it's because of you, Lord. I am grateful. So now, Lord, we come before your presence as a grateful heart. We come before you recognizing, Father, that you are our source. You're the source of our life. You're the source of our strength. We praise you, Father, because your word has remained true, that you continue to supply every one of our needs. We honor you, Father, because your word has stayed true, that you never leave us, that you would never forsake us, and that you would be with us always. We're so grateful. When we've done some things you could have turned, but you didn't. We're grateful. We're grateful, Father, because you know some things we've done that weren't pleasing in your sight, but you forgave us anyway. You had compassion on us anyway. When we know we haven't done all you've asked us to do, you bless us still. We are grateful. And we take you to so we do not take you for granted but we humble ourselves as we come before your presence mm. recognizing you are great and you are mighty father we acknowledge you as the lord over our lives and so father we declare send a word today that will lead us guide us direct us Send a word, Lord, that will lift up bow down heads. Send a word that every discouraged heart will leave here encouraged. Send a word, Father, that maketh even the simple wise. Mm. Drive out folly, bring understanding. Drive out confusion, bring peace and order. And Father, we declare these things in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will have its own way in this house. Bless us one by one, Father. Bless us name by name, because you know what we need even before we ask it. So, Father, we declare we will leave here better than we came. We declare we will leave stronger than we came. We declare we will leave wiser than we came. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare victory over defeat. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare it in Jesus' name. All the people of God, let's give our King a hand clap of praise. Clap those hands like you know you already have the victory. Praise them like you already have the victory. Hallelujah. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord, and we are grateful to, the, to, to God and to all the saints and friends that are here. Grateful to my husband, my boyfriend in the back. Wave your hands, honey, so they'll know who you are. This is, he, he does it every time. He's the guy. He's the handsome black chocolate dude in the powder blue suit. Yeah. Uh, to all of our ministers, I greet you and appreciate you. Wait, I got to do this. I got to do this. All right. Now, praise God. Praise God. Hi. What's the name of our youth organization? S-O-G. No, say the full name. Space of Grace. Do you recognize that voice? Stand up. This is Daniel, everyone. He's the man that does all of our sound from Detroit that does our, yeah, he, he's got a degree in that voice. Uh, thank you, Daniel. So glad that you're here. Um, and to uh, Louisiana again. Stand up, Louisiana. We got Louisiana in the house. We got a whole row. Woo! so good to see you all thank you thank you for being with us today and indiana who's just kind of like blending in already their beautiful daughters their mom and dad um some of you might remember a few weeks ago uh, when minister dexter was here he had some guests that was their mom and dad and so uh they're here again with us but and i'm especially thankful because i got my girlfriend like okay don't judge me but there's a few people that can be like instantly a girlfriend like seriously let me be human there's few people that can just instantly be like, this is my girl, this is my girlfriend. 
Stand up, Jamelia. She know what I'm talking about. This is my girlfriend right here. Stand up, boo. This is my girlfriend, Jamelia, right here. Can y'all give it up for me? This is my girl, my girlfriend, for real. This is my girl. I know. This is my girl. She's like a me, but it's in the social and civil. Um, and I, when I see her do something, I'll be like, oh, my God. He saved me. If he didn't, I would. He gave me this. He's given her a platform um, that she is the young lady that is taking this um, ball and running with it. And I do pray that uh, just this is not a political thing, but it is something that we have to be aware of. And we know all that's been happening in injustice within uh, the law enforcement and things like that. I genuinely, sincerely applaud her because she's somebody that is um, underestimated. And what I mean by that is she's extremely, extremely passionate and real. And I love realness. Um, what you see is what you get. Um, she's loyal. She's real. She's going to speak her mind. I've been there to witness it. Um, <laughs> and then she can, she can turn around and talk to the White House as if she works there. Um, a very talented young lady, but she's taking the ball and running with the AB392 bill to bring justice in the police force. So again, she is a force to be reckoned with. Can y'all give it up for? That's who's doing that in our city and in our state and in our nation. She is a force to be reckoned with. So as these bills and different things come up, you know now who's behind it and we want to support. Change can't happen till people get in there and make change happen. Change can't happen until we get in the game and let change happen. So, um, and to all of our visitors, we greet you with the love of Jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to attempt to minister something today that's been wearying. It's been wearying. Is that the right word? Bothering me. It's been bothering me um, for a very long time, and I'm going to give it about two months. And I have wrestled, and I have prayed on it. I have uh, sought the Lord on what he would want me to do with it. Um, but then uh, last night and early this morning, he said, no, we're going to have to go here. So it's one of those things that to our visitors, I, I do, to, to everybody that's here, um, if it's something that is relevant to you, then I praise God and I hope that it can bless your life. If it's something that maybe is not relevant to you, but is relevant to somebody you know, I pray that you can get wisdom to how to guide and help them. And then for some that says it has um, nothing to do with me now, but it will have something to do with me in the future, I pray that it can bless you. It is... Um, um, it's one of those that, you know, as, as your mama used to say when you were young, and I don't want to start off like this, but I do because I just want us to be okay with it. When your mama was in, you know, your daddy would tell you, no, now this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Did your parents ever say that? that I don't want to beat you, but it's going to hurt me. You lying, mom. No one's beating you. But um, <laughs> the point is they love you so much that they don't want to do things that will harm you, but that harm is not to hurt you, the harm is to help you. Yeah, good parents did what they did not to hurt you, it was to help you. So we wanna talk about a spirit of judgment and, and, and I want us to understand two forms of judgment because judgment has two understandings and two definitions. This has been on me for months. And at this point, I truly am trying to minister prophetically and as an exhortation to the house um, so that we can prevent a matter. But I've walked with God long enough to know that if he puts something heavy, it's a foreknowledge of things to come. And he gives us wisdom how to prevent it if we obey. If we don't, it, 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 some things are just is what it is. Some things, saints, because of God's providence and his judgment, you can't even rebuke it away. You can't. It just is what it is, and it's going to run God's course because God is God, and he remains in control. So I want to talk about judgment. So there's one judgment, and that's the ability to judge, the ability to make a decision or form an opinion not subjectively, but objectively. Because real judgment reads all sides. It looks at all sides. It gathers all information before you're too hasty to say a thing. 
So good, sound judgment, it sees things and it forms an opinion objectively and authoritatively. The authority comes because I've researched things. It's not because it's out of your head. It's not because it's what you think. It's because you've researched things, you've looked at data, you've collected things, and this is the judgment, the opinion that is coming out of a situation. Um, it is objectively, it's authoritatively, and it's wisely, especially in matters affecting action or good sense or discretion. It's judgment. and. And, and a lot of the things that's happening in our earth and spirits that are being released in our earth, what's happening is it's as if judgment can be debated, meaning decisions. It's as if decisions can be debated or that's just your opinion. And opinion and judgment are two different things. Because opinion is what I think. It is what I feel. It is my limited base of knowledge. But judgment is collected knowledge. Judgment is wisdom. Judgment is it is so. Judgment is I've seen this before and this is how it ends. That's judgment. It is not opinion. And I think for sure within this generation where, and I won't even give it like it's all millennial or whatever, just the air that we're living in, everybody's got an opinion. And we voice it freely on social media, and we voice it freely everywhere we want. And all of these opinions sometimes people take as a fact. It's not a fact, it's an opinion. And can you base or give me credibility on your opinion? No, you really can't. But judgment comes from wisdom. Hallelujah. Sound judgment, discretion, how to handle a matter means my emotions are out of the situation. And I am now looking at this objectively, wisely. How does it affect hundreds of thousands and not just you? How does it impact millions and not just you? How have we seen situations handled? You only know yours. But this has happened a gazillion times before. And this has been the consequences, or this is how this worked out. It's judgment. Now, that's one part of judgment. But then there's another judgment. And there's another judgment, which is a misfortune regarded as inflicted by divine sentence. As for sin, there's another judgment, and that judgment belongs to God. And this is why I need a whole lot of prayer today, because I want to try to deliver this, and even to our guests that might be here, that you might not be a believer or know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You're here because somebody invited you. I do pray that something can still be delivered in a simple form enough to at least give an understanding that God is a God of judgment. And I know that this is a day that we need a lot of grace because a lot is going on. And when I tell you I'm the first grace cheerleader, we need a lot of grace because so much is going on. But there's also a judgment that church, this is the part I'm trying so hard to make people understand. God's judgment is out of everybody's control. You'll feel like it's not fair. It's like, I know, but can't nobody do nothing about God's judgment. So what happens is there's two judgments that, I'm going to speak for me as a pastor, there's two judgments that I am constantly striving to do in a parallel manner. I'm not even talking about I don't minister. You don't hear me bring it up a lot about this judgment that I know it is. I know it is because scripture tells me. There's stories that have proven it. So I constantly try to bring enough truth to say, so just grab this judgment. Learn how to make the right decision. Become wise. Get authority on what's right and what's wrong. If you operate in this, then we never have to be here. We won't have to be here. Because I've learned God's wisdom. I've learned discretion. 
I've learned how to make the right choices. And it's not about what I feel. Lord, I love you. It's about what's right by God. Because God gives the best wisdom. So, here we go. So I got to give this story. And maybe I'll speed it up. But it's a rough story. And I want to give the story about consequences of what happened due to a lack of of judgment. And really, church, all of this is still about legacy. So here we go in the story. So there was a man named Eli who was a priest in the house of God. And now the sons of Eli were sons of Bilal. Now I thought Bilal was like talking about Balaam like an idol god, but it wasn't. That was their slang, for lack of a better way of putting it, to say they were worthless. Belial, y'all could use different words that you could come to your man, but that was their word back in their day. Belial meant worthless. So the priest Eli, who was over the house of God, had two sons in the church. And the Bible said that his sons were worthless. They did not fear God. The Bible says, now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he said unto them, why are you doing this? For I hear of your evil dealings by all the people. Eli's sons because of their position, because of what they were in the church, they sleeping with the girls in the church. Now, I don't know why we act like stuff is new. So, they have in their Daughters of Legacy class, and Eli and them are offering to be porters for the day. Really? Today? Why won't you be porters for the food and clothes closet? Why you want to be porters when we have in the young daughters class? Y'all know I got to make things real life so we can make it relevant. There's nobody on my mind right now. There's nothing except this story that have haunted me, bothered me, he's been talking to me about for two months. Two months. So he had two sons, but his sons were sleeping with the girls of the church. And Eli said, everybody's talking about y'all sleeping with girls in the church. He said, name my sons, for it is not a good report that I hear. Watch this part, because this is what broke me. You make the Lord's people to transgress. Because if one man sin against another, then the judge shall judge him. So if you do what you do against somebody else, he said, you could be judged for that. But when a man do what he do against God, who shall entreat for him? Who can intercede for you when you do this against God? And I said to the Lord, and he, and he said, tell me what they didn't understand what they didn't understand was that you are sons of the priests and everything about the house of God was for the people to be blessed. It was for the people to understand God's ways. It was for the people to see what is it to be a child of Israel, to be the children of Israel. It was the job of Eli to teach the people how to present their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That was his job. And his sons should have been emulators of this lifestyle because you are blessed because you're my son. You're blessed because you are in the house of Eli. Let me talk to these church kids for a minute. You're blessed because you don't have some experiences that some kids have. And so you're coming from healthy homes, or at least homes that have a slight godliness. Are y'all working with me? Some struggles that other kids have, you don't even know about it because I bless you to be in this house. And the Holy Spirit said, I bless them to be an example to those that don't know God yet. They are teaching them ways of evil. 
So when the sinner girl, sinner boy comes into the house of God and looks for their peers to delight and learn the ways of God instead, you're teaching me ways of iniquity in the church. God said I held them accountable. I chose them. I did that. I saved their parents when I did so that they can be blessed, so they can have the children that they have, so they can be a blessing to their generation. But instead, you turning the kids out that's coming in from the streets. Please walk with me. Please walk with me. He said, notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father. Because the Lord would slay them. So Eli rebuked his boys. He asked his boys, what are you doing? But Eli took no action to correct his boys. He rebuked his boys. But he took no action to correct his boys. I'm speaking to the house. Again, two months, two months, two months. I don't know what people do in their home. It's not my business. But as a believer, as a saint, we are accountable for what we allow in our home. We are accountable. I know it's going to get real intense. Because the blessing God gave was from him. So Eli took no action. So the next thing that happened was then there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto Eli, Eli, thus, let me tell you what God said. Thus said the Lord, did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father? Eli, let me give you, let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me do a rewind about your blessing. I plainly appeared unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house, right? Next verse. And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by the fire of the children of Israel? Keep going. Wherefore, why are you kicking at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation? And why are you honoring your sons above you? Make yourselves fat with the cheapest of all the offices of Israel and my people. So Eli, help me understand. I'm the one that blessed you. I'm the one that brought you out. I'm the one that gave you what you did, what you have. I'm the one that took you from the land of Israel and I brought you into this great promised land. I did this blessing for you. So help me understand when you start listening to your kids. Why you favor. Letting your kids walk in iniquity more than honoring what I have done for your life. It gets real tight when it comes to our kids. Oh, I know I ain't going to get a lot of amens, but it's okay. I, I'm, I wore tennis shoes on purpose. Maybe I'd have to run out. Or just. <laughs> All through scripture, church, I can show you multiple stories were great men and women of God. They were okay doing the will of God till it came to their children. And they got, they're so emotionally attached and think I can save my child or chasten my child or help my child better than God. As if I can cover my child's wrong like God can't see it, like God don't know it. I can show you all through scripture that there was judgment. Lord, please help me today. There were consequences when you stood in the way of God's judgment for the actions of your child. And so he said, be it far from me. But now the Lord said, be it far from me. 30 verse. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father, I told you every the way that I bless you, I said unto you that you should walk before me forever. 
But now the Lord said, be it far from me, for them that honor me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So because you chose to defend your child over doing what's right by me, you chose to honor your child more than you chose to honor me. Just let me let you know, I saw that. Therefore shall not, uh, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, 30, yeah. And therefore, uh, that for them that honor me, I will honor them, and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Church, let me tell you something about, I guess this is what we do. Please pray for me. Can y'all please pray for me? Please pray for me. Please pray for me. Y'all say I'm praying for you? So, so I think what happens is, and I'm going to talk about myself, I think what happens is because we have been into some situations ourselves, parents, we have come through some things ourselves, parents, it's true, yes, that I think sometimes when we see some actions or things that our kids have done that are doing that we know we've done as well, we tend to be a little bit compassionate because we say, well, I don't mean no harm, I did it too. If I could just get a few amens to try. Yeah, the difference is you may not have been raised in the things of holiness. The difference is... You may not have known any better, but when our kids know better, they still. You have to make them accountable. That's the difference. And so, or it could be just the opposite. Whoa, this is going to be a good one. Or it could be just the opposite. It could be you was raised in the church and they were so strict on you and they never let you do anything that you just let your child do anything and you'll turn around and say, well, I just don't want my child to be a hater of God. Well, let's deal with that for a minute. You ain't no hater of God and they were strict on you. So why would your child be a hater of God when you're where you are because of how they taught you? All of this is based on accountability of the child or the young adult or the one to be grown. And I'm walking softly because I'm not making this a millennial bash. I got to just teach this. I'm trying to teach it because I need all of us to feel it. I need all of us. This ain't bashing. I, this is, I need all of us to feel it. <sighs> so behold, the days that I will cut off thine arm. Eli, I gave you sons. To raise sons to be example of men of God. I'm going to stay right here for a minute. For a minute. I'm going to stay right here. Don't ever get it twisted. Ever. Never. We can do the, oh, millennial service. We can do all these hip names. Ooh, we going to Catalina, Space of Grace. Ooh, we going to have the women of legacy. Don't ever get it twisted. All of these are fancy names to teach us to be honorable men and women of God. We won't be young whores. We ain't going to be young sluts. We ain't going to be young hoochie mamas. We ain't going to be young heifers. We ain't going to be young twerking demonic heifer demons. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing it. Don't get it twisted. Now, if you want me to give it a name like you come into the twerk free service, whatever it's got to be, it's your language. We ain't doing that. We are raising honorable women and young men. Don't get, I don't care who you are. We ain't doing that. That's for our daughters. Number two, don't get it twisted. It ain't no double standard. If our girls shouldn't be sleeping around, our boys shouldn't be sleeping around. We ain't raising no whoremonging, dropping your seed, running on, taking girls advantage of their emotions. And we ain't raising those kind of boys either. I wish I could get an amen up in this house. I wish I could get a standing ovation. Just like our girls got to be honorable, our men have to be honorable. Our boys have to be honorable. You will learn how to respect young women. Because whorish boys grow up to be whorish men. So whatever title, we got to make it fancy. You want me to make it the whore free boys ministry? Then that's what it'll be called. God 
God have marked your life to be holy. High righteous men. Show this world what a real man look like, an honorable young man, a saved young man, a prosperous young man. I ain't got but one little boy raising his arms. Oh, yeah, devil, we got your number. I've been wrestling with your demon for two months. In the name of Jesus, we will raise up honorable young men, honorable young daughters in the name of Jesus. They will come out of this house, and they will be examples to their peers in the name of Jesus. They will not be confused in their identity. Oh, God, I love you so much. They will not be confused about their purpose they will rule and take God by seek he on the Lord. they will rule and take dominion as God have purpose in their life I need some praise I need some praise they will be amazing fathers and they will be amazing mothers and they will be honorable young men and great husbands and great wives I need some praise I am a hundred percent clear of the assignment. A hundred percent. I'm not confused at all. I can make these fancy names. He said, let me tell you something. You're building legacy. And for our fathers and our members and saints that have come from stuff and that have come out of lifestyles and that have come out of brokenness, God have healed our minds and our families and our finances and our marriages to then pass that blessing unto our children. And devil, you a lying wonder. If you think I'm going to let that demon slip up in my child and you destroy the blessing of my whole home, the devil is a liar. He said, the days will come, Eli, because you did not use did nothing. You let it be. You rebuked him and that was it. You showed no consequences. Eli, you have just dishonored me. I need parents to wake up. I'm not in your house. I don't own your house. I'm telling you by the word. You don't let your grown child dishonor the house that God has blessed you with. You don't let no grown child bring sin into your house that God has blessed you with. I know it's hurting right now, but if I be a woman of God, you'll love me later. I'm going to tell you the truth, so help me God. These kids are worn with demons in principalities and spiritual places. And these demons are latching on to our children. And you aid it when you do nothing. Make them feel the judgment of God so they can repent. Make them feel the judgment of God so they can confess. Make them feel the judgment of God so they can get themselves right. daddy make you feel it because when God whip your behind ain't nothing we can do nothing God. so you rather I put you out you rather I take stuff from you because when God begin to whip your behind there's nothing we can do to intercede nothing so I need y'all to know me know me if I sit you down, I'm not sitting you down because it's personal. I cannot let you be raised a hypocrite in the house of God and God judge you. So if I sit you down because I love you and I want you to get it right so they that worship him can worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah, but other people doing things. I don't know about them. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the anointing on you. I'm talking about the purpose on you. I'm doing I know my assignment and I love every one of our members I love every one of our children and I know where we're going and I know the beauty of what God is asking but we have to get there in the spirit and in truth 
We have to get there in a sincere and honest heart before the Lord. We've got to get there telling the Lord, I'm doing everything I can to do things right and honorable unto you. Now you have to bless my mistakes and outside of that. But you have to know I'm trying to do everything right. But what I will not do is ignore a demon. I will not ignore that this ain't happening. I will not act like it's not my child. I will not act like I don't own that. I will own it. I will pick up my cross. I'll take it. Now come on and help me. Come on and bless me you already know you already see my life is in your hands I need some praise up in this house Eli behold the days are gonna come that I'm gonna cut off from thine arm I'm cutting your legacy Eli there is no legacy in the arm of your father's house and there shall not be an old man in your house Eli this is the judgment it's gonna come to you because you did nothing. I bless you to be a blessing, Eli. I bless your house for you to be a blessing to other people. And you dishonored me. So, Eli, Eli, legacy will not be in your house. Your house will always be known as the house of Eli, whose son slept with the women. We are preaching this today, thousands of years later. Because it was his legacy. And the Bible said, And this shall be a sign unto thee, Eli, that shall come upon thy two sons of Hophni and Phinehas in one day. They shall die, both of them, and I will raise me up a faithful priest. <laughs> That's going to do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house, and he will work, walk before my anointed forever. Let me tell you something else I've concluded. Back in the day, and I get it, I totally understand it, and we still say it today, you know. Oh my God, be careful. You don't want to bring a reproach on the church. Oh my God, be careful. Yeah, um, I concluded, uh, you can't bring no reproach on the church. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Oh, this is going to be good. All over the world. All over the world. I, I walk softly saying this. I walk gingerly, Father, judge my words in the name of Jesus. Um, I get it with a pastor of tip, but honey, I don't wear tip like I got perfect people or like if something happened, oh my God, did you hear about tip? I don't know, what did you hear? Tell me. What? They did what? Because God is the church. <laughs> so I don't wear the pressure of the reproach coming on the church. You know why? God is the church. Hold that thought. You brought reproach on you. Yeah. yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Guess what? People come. Ain't that what he's saying? People go. I'll find somebody to represent me. I gave you a chance. Up. Oh, that reproach is on you. Honey, how many preachers, no good folk, have done stuff in the church? And the church is still moving. I need y'all to get a little praise. You know how many crooked pastors, prophets, honey, you ain't got nothing to do with God. God remains good. Uh, and his mercy endureth forever. You ain't bring no reproach on the church. You brought a reproach on you. I'm crystal clear. Listen, Satan, I'm saying this by the grace of God. Listen, Satan, I, got, I feel in my heart so much work to do for Jesus. You ain't trapping me up in the name of Jesus with all these little cliches from the world and cliche. That's a shame about the church. It's a shame about you too, ain't it? You doing something too. Everybody doing something. We all need Jesus. Now let's keep it moving. I need some, ain't no perfect church. Ain't no perfect child. bring reproach on you young man on you we know who your mom and your daddy is young woman you bring a reproach on you you the one that told everybody you were saved young girl young man you the one that we see on Facebook at the church on Sunday and at the club on Saturday young man young woman you bring a reproach on you you the one twerking cussing drinking smoking you doing your thing we say we praising God you bring a reproach and judgment on you don't get this twisted don't get it twisted we trying to help you.
God's judgment. And so it came to pass that there was a war against the Philistines and the church. And the church brought the Ark of the Covenant, hoping that the Ark of the Covenant would then stop the Philistines from destroying them. But because their heart wasn't with God, that they used the Ark of the Covenant, but it still didn't work because you can't play with God. God said, they come before me as my people. He said, they sing a lovely song. The Bible said, but their hearts are far from me. You can work in ministry. You could do, but your heart ain't here. Your heart is in the streets. Your heart is with your man, your boo, whatever you're doing. I don't know. It ain't my business. He said, so they came before him, and they tried to act like we got this, and they made like they were worshiping God. But the Bible says that they were defeated anyway. And so the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled to the day out of the army. And he said, he's talking to Eli, and he said, what? What is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled from the Philistines, and there have been also a great slaughter among the people. And just as God judged it, and thy two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. Just like he told you. Just like he told you. There are some things. I'm, I'm, two months I've been wrestling with this. Two months. Two months, these stories have been ringing and ringing. I, I wouldn't even read them. I wouldn't. Two months. Just like God said, it happened. It couldn't be stopped. It couldn't be voted. I got to think the only way it could have is if Hophni and Phinehas would have repented. I got to think what could have possibly helped them to repent would have been if their father put a greater judgment. My daddy was straight. I was raised in the generation where we wore dresses to school at 12. At 12, he stopped buying me pants. It didn't matter that I wasn't saved. It didn't matter that I didn't accept Jesus on my own because at 12 was when I was truly crazy. <clears throat> What mattered to my father is that I'm responsible to train you in the way you should go. Whether you like it or not, living it or not, accepting it or not, you're in my house. So my job is to train you in the way you should go. That's what God holds me accountable for. So at that day, was nothing, was no jewelry, I couldn't wear nothing, no dresses. So being the way I am, I was like, if I got to wear dresses every day, then daddy, you're going to have to hook me up because I got to have some nice dresses. So I did. So I wore my dresses every day, long, 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 long story short. When God began to save me, and when God, I'm talking to teenagers for a minute, when God began to save me, and when I tell you there's not much you could tell me that you're doing that I haven't done. And that's real talk. There's not much you can tell me you're doing that I haven't done. But when God saved me, he literally walked me up out of myself and let me see myself. And I ran from that time on. Everything that Satan meant for evil for me, God turned it all around. And so I became this oratorical speaker in our school. I became a prized possession in our school called Detroit Central High. Give it up, Eric. Detroit, you're supposed to say something. Detroit Central High, which was one of the worst schools in the city. But God used me during these oratorical contests, and I went all the way to Cobo Hall. Yeah, big time contests. This was the gifting that God put on me and the favor that God began to open doors for me because I submitted myself to my father. I began to honor my father, making this story, very long story short. In my days when I was getting high, in the days when I was skipping school, and so I'm missing credits, and so it's time for me to graduate. Many of you already know the story. It was time for me to graduate, and they gave me, and it was one of those, you go on across the stage, and I open up, it was no diploma. What? Why ain't got no diploma? Well, because you got some credits missing. Okay, fine. Well, then I said, they said, you're going to go to summer school? I said, no, because at the time, I wanted to travel with Mother Boy. I'm 17, 18 by now. Travel with Mother Boy for the summer. I go through the whole summer traveling with Mother Boy, because I figured, fine, I'll just go to night school. That fall, I go up to the school. 
school. Hey, Mr. Rogers, that was the principal. Hey, Mr. Rogers, hey, what's up, Stacks? Because back in Detroit, everybody got the last name. What's up, little Stacks? How you doing? I said, good. He said, what you doing up here, girl? You running for president? He was saying, like I said, no, sir, I, I'm missing credits. What you mean you're missing credits? I said, I'm missing credits. I can't, I'm, I'm sorry for signing up for night school. He said, go pull Stacks records. Go meet me in my office. I went in his office. He came, he looked through my credits. He started adding them up, adding them up. And sure enough, I was short. He said, hold on, Stacks. He went in the back and he came back out. He said, let me tell you something, Stacks. He said, girl, for the reputation you gave our school, I'm going to give you those credits. Look for your diploma in the mail. That's how God does when there's favor. That's a true story. So as painful as the story of Eli is, I, I, I said to the Lord, I said, you got to show me something and give me something in the New Testament. And I'm sorry to say that the New Testament didn't help me out much better. So when in Luke, the Bible said, the Lord of that servant will come in one day. And when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Watch this, watch this. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Between the story of Eli and this scripture, the Lord said, tell me the problem is they think they're normal. And our sons and daughters that have been raised in the ways of God they're so busy trying to be like other kids, they forgot their lives are marked. And they're not like them. And I will hold them accountable for what they know. And they will be beat with many stripes because you know better. I can take a kid from this community that don't know nothing about Jesus and then the kid from the community, that's just God, y'all. It's just how it is. And this kid from the community, I'm trying to help them come through struggles, help them come through whatever that struggle might be. There's a level of grace and compassion that will be given to that child according to Scripture because this child never knew the ways of God. He said, but then you'll have another child right next to that child going through the exact same struggle. He said, but you... It's going to be a little different because you volunteered to walk in that mess because you knew better. He said, so you are going to be beat with many stripes. Wait, don't nobody get away. Next verse. He said, but you're going to be beat with many stripes. But he that knoweth not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with a few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given. Of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will be asked the more. Ah, this is where I got to turn the page. Because the flip of it is, is that we can have children that have come from different lifestyles that had no, no type of teaching of godliness at all. And then when God saved them and gave their heart to Christ, he sang you owe me a little bit more because I brought you for more. I know. It's like a wild God. Seriously, you bargaining? No, I, that's just the way it is. I brought you from some stuff. Nobody could bring you out but me. You owe me. You owe me. You was tied up, wrapped up, trapped up, written off for loss. It was me that rescued you, saved you, healed you, blessed you. You owe me. True story. I have a story for everything. And so that part that said you'll be beaten with many stripes, I have a story for everything. True story. True story. Three things have bothered me for three months, two months. Here it goes. The story of Eli, this scripture right here, and a story that I witnessed as a child. True story, no names mentioned because of I'm going to protect the innocent and those that might be watching online. True story about these young people in my church when I was growing up. Our church was called Shalom Temple. It was a, we called it the Red Barn on the corner of Midland and Maryland because it was so small. It was like this and going back. It was so small. We called it the Red Barn, but there was a lot of power in that church. Okay, so here's this church, and it was a very anointed church, and we had very powerful services. So as it, as if you could think of our most powerful services, that was our services on a regular basis. 
There was a time nobody knew because still stay with scripture. Everything done in darkness shall come to the exactly so you'll never get away with anything well anywho there was a time that I guess these uh, couples this girl and boy this girl and boy four people they were leaving these anointed services and they were going to one of the daughter's house and having this orgy thing going on one of the young ladies served in ministry served very closely in ministry this young lady had a beautiful gift. She had a beautiful prophetic gift and anointing. And this is why people don't judge when you say, you know, I understand how people can do so much and they still be used by God. Well, the gift belongs to God, but I trust me, he will judge for how you handled his gift. Trust me. Story goes on that um, one day, true story, one day we were in a service, a normal service, and the Holy Spirit picked up one of our prophetic gifts. And this is why I want the gifts of God to work in this house picked up one of the prophetic gifts. She, she began to well and cry, and she came down, the, came down the middle aisle, and then she went and got each four of those young people, brought them to the middle of the church, and screamed, repent, repent, repent. True story. The four of them cried. They were broken. One of the couples, the girl who worked so closely in ministry, she and the young man end up marrying just for the sake of reproach. That's why I said I'm not, you know, I'd rather you repent and let's see if y'all belong together first. Let's. But out of shame, they got married. I've never seen this scripture beaten by many stripes till the Lord brought this around. They married. They had children. Things happened in their marriage. Abuse happened other things I don't even know all the inside I just know they lost their children their children were given to other saints to help raise the female she got strung out really badly she got into different situations that just weren't healthy and I'm saying this cautiously because I love them and their family she got caught up in different things her life never came whole divorced her life never got whole again she was beat that was the beating it was the consequences that you did what you did knowing what you know never made it right her life never got happy again needless to say by the grace of God and all of his goodness she did pass away in the faith. She did. By the time she passed away, she was saved. She had given her heart back to Christ. But the Lord brought that story to me, and he said, Tammy, he said, that was an example of being beat. I know her. I know her life. I know her struggle. I know her trying so hard. But the consequences, church, this is a severe story, but it's still a true story. It's one that I watched and that I know so I'm saying to the young people of this house, I need you to walk with me in wisdom. I'm not trying to make you anything except the wise children that he's making you accountable to be. And all these other influences, I'm telling you, sin, don't win. You will never, if I be a woman of God, if I be a woman of God, you will never fit and if you continue to choose the route you're choosing, I'm not predicting that you won't be saved. I'm not predicting God's not going to forgive you. But if I stay with scripture, it's going to come with a consequence. It's going to come with consequences. These are messages people don't preach no more, which makes everybody just feel like we can do what we want to do. Then when stuff happens, nobody understands why. There are consequences. God is a God of judgment. And I'm not going to make you think you can have a happy life if you don't choose his life. You got to choose his life to have a happy life. You got to choose. So the lack of judgment will bring God's judgment. The lack of judgment of knowing the right thing to do. I think scripture tells me that my people are destroyed because they know too much. 
So if I don't search out a matter to get all the understanding of a matter, if I don't search it out and pray it out to get an understanding how should I choose, then I'm going to be in the wind and do what everybody else is doing. And so I have to be prepared that the consequences on me will be greater than they will be on others. There's another story. Here we go. Give me a little worship. Then there was a man named Samuel. So Samuel is the kid that Hannah prayed for when she was barren. And when she finally could have a child, you know what Hannah did? Hannah promised the Lord, I'm going to give this child into the house of Eli. Hannah, Samuel, was raised with Hophni and Phinehas. They were raised in the same house. But Samuel, God's hand was upon. And the Bible said, but Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child girded with a linen ephod. Samuel chose to serve in the house of God. Why we ask you to serve in the house of God, it, yeah, we do need the help, but that's not why. It's a, it's a form of trying to teach you, help you how to give God something back. It's putting time in with God so you can call them in your day of trouble. It's putting time in, it's sowing in the house of God so when you come 35, 40, you got something to reach back on and reap from. I don't need some adults. I need some adults. I need some adults. Do you know how many adults wish they had a church they could have worked in when they were young? Do you know how many adults wish somebody told them the truth? I'm telling them right now. Because what we can admit, some things we wish we could have avoided. What we can admit, young people, some mistakes are not retractable. They're not. We live with them. For the rest of our lives. There's some cases in this church, and I'm not going to mention their name, but you were on my mind today. That when they decided to go their own way. When they decided, I don't want to be this church man of God or church woman of God, they felt the consequences. Things hit them hard, and they were beat. Prison. They did time. They did stuff that otherwise, they should be in prison today. But God and his mercy and them repenting. And so they serve in the house today because, God, I owe you because you saved me from much. I owe you in your house, Father, because you brought me from much. I owe you, Father. You help me. You, you shorten my sentence. I owe you. I owe you. I owe you. Everyone's standing. And the Bible says, and the child Samuel grew on and was in favor, both with the Lord and with men. This altar call today is for families. It's for parents that need to say, help me, Lord. I got to do better. It's for young people that need to say, I don't want to be beat. <laughs> I'm sorry. And let me tell you, young people, you know how you get to God? You tell them the truth. You tell them the truth about the struggle. You tell them the truth about what you like that you won't let go. Somebody said to me the day we were talking about something and we were just casually talking. And they say, yeah, I just don't know why I couldn't do it, and I didn't do it, and I, I, I keep doing it. And I say, because you don't love God enough. You love the thing more than you love God. When you can admit, I love this thing. It makes me feel accepted. I love this thing. It makes me feel good, and I need help. Because, Father, you're the one I need, and you're the one I want. Parents, we got to make confessions before the Lord. And we got to tell the Lord, we're sorry that I've made, if I can say my child an idol, I put them before you. I know what's right. So teach me how to help my child. Yeah. So this altar is open now. And it's for anybody and everybody. Young people, I want you to know, based on this message, I have to make turns in this house. And it's because I love you. It's because I love you. To some of our parents, that maybe your kid's not a teenager now, and maybe they're not a young adult now, but please grab it. You can grab this message now. I need some young people that are coming. We're making it right before God. We're making it right. I need parents that are coming. We're making it right before God. We're making it right before God. We're making it right before God. We're making it right. I need praises. They're still coming. You're talking to God. You're talking to God. 
You're talking to God. Oh, this is beautiful. Men of God, I praise you. Praise him for the men of God, for the young people. I need a real praise in this house. I need a real praise in this house. I need a real praise in this house. I praise him for the parents that are coming. I praise him for the young men that are coming. This is beautiful. Bigger praise, bigger praise. If you're not up here, then you must be okay. So I need you to praise him for them. I need you to keep a prayer for them. We praise you, Father. We praise you. We're trying to get it right. We're getting it right. We're getting it right. We're getting it right. We're getting it right. Young daughters, you're coming. Young sons, you're coming. And you got to tell God the truth. You got to tell God, I don't want this in my heart. Father, I don't want to be a fornicator. Say it. Say it. Say it. I don't want to be a fornicator. I don't want men all over my body. Say it. Men of God, Lord, teach me how to be an honorable man of God. Teach me how not to take advantage of young women and young girls. I know I got to work this. Teach me, Father. Be, teach me, Father, how not to feel like a coward. Teach me how to stand up strong as a man of God. Teach me how to stand up strong as a light to other young men. Because I want your prosperity. And I say, I don't want to be a foolish man. And I don't want to be a foolish woman. I don't want to be a foolish child to grow up to be a foolish woman. So teach me wisdom right now in my age, right now. Right now, talk to me right where I am. Young people, we had our conversation. I told you, nobody needs to pray for you. You can pray for yourself. You tell God out of your heart. You pour out your own heart before the Lord. He already sees it. He already knows it. You can't hide from him. He already knows what you're doing. And if I be a woman of God, this message is coming today for grace. It's for grace. It's him saying, I see it, and I need you to get it together. Hear me, church. He said, I see you, and I sent this message to help you get it together. Own it and make things right by me. Make things right by me. Father, every soul that's at this altar, we are all praying. We are all praying. We are all praying. There is no judging at this altar. Do you hear me? There is no judging. There is no judging. This altar is open to anybody and everybody. There is no judging. There is no judging. This thing at this altar is between you and God is nobody's business. This is nobody's business. And you will not be judged. You're coming before your king. You're coming for your king that is full of mercy and that is full of grace. You have a compassionate God. You have a merciful God, and I love him because he understands. You got a God who understands. He understands the struggle. He understands the influence. I feel him. He understands the pressure. He understands your heart, mama, daddy. He understands your heart. He understands your motive. He knows you love your child. He knows it. He knows it. He understands. He understands. He understands. He knows you love them. He knows it. He knows it's hard to make the right decision. But he's saying, I can do what you can't do in the end. You want your child saved. Let me save them. He's saying, let me save them. I can do what you can't do. I can reach them where you can't reach them. Turn them over to me. I need some intercessors to come. I need some prayer warriors to come. Come help me pray. Come help me pray. I need preachers to come help me come. Stand with them. Stand with them. Stand with them. Come through this together. Come through this together. You're not alone. I'm going to carry you through this. What is the end game you want, mama? What is the end game you want, Daddy? You want your child saved? Then turn them over to me. Give them to me. I know how to reach your baby. I know. I know. I know the root of it. You don't know. I know. Let me be God in their lives. Let me be God. Let me be God. I 
I'm raising them up for a testimony. Let me be God. Diana, I need you to help me pray. Sister Brandy, I need you to help me to pray. Come on, Christine, I need you to help me to pray. Let me be God. Let me be Lord over their lives. Let them get to know me the way I taught you to know them. Let me be God. Let me be their God. Hi, I know. I know where they are. I know how deep it is. I know. I'm the only one that can do it. I'm the only one that can run it up. I'm the only one that can reach them. I know what to say. I know where they are. I know what they need. I know what they need to hear. Trust that I am your God. Trust that I am your God. Trust that I am your God. And the thoughts I think towards you are only good. They are not evil to give you an expected end. What do you expect me to do? Whatever you expect me to do, I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there. I'll get in the struggle. I'll untwine the struggle. I'll untwine the struggle. I'll untwine the struggle. I know what you don't know. I know what you don't know. I know what you don't know. I can do what you can't do. And I must say, I know what you Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up every soul at this altar because you know us one by one and you know us name by name and you know what we need even before we ask it. Father, I lift our babies up before you. I lift our babies. I lift our babies. created me a clean heart I want to do it right for you Father I want to do it right for you Father 
I want to do it right for you. you to get all the glory so father now I commit these children into your hands I commit every parent into your hands I commit every adult into your hands I commit the families in your hands so father from this day forth you will lead us you will guide us give us wisdom give us your knowledge give us your understanding father we come against every demonic influence in our homes we come against every demonic spirit of rebelliousness and stiff neck. We come against every addiction. We come against every tormentor that will come against our children and attack our homes in the name of Jesus. We come against every demonic spirit of violence and wrath that will come against us in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of strife in the name, strife in the name of Jesus. We declare that our homes will be blessed. We declare that our homes will have peace. We declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. I need y'all to clap those hands and declare victory. Declare victory. Declare victory. Declare victory. It's turning around. It's turning around. Come on, because it won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concern. Sooner or later, it's gonna work in my favor. He's turning around for me. It won't always be. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. The Lord will perfect that. Hey! Concerning me. And sooner or later, hey! It's going to work in my face. He's turning it around for me. It won't be like this. The Lord will protect that concerning me. Turning around for me. It won't always be like this. Get ready, church. Get ready. The Lord will perfect, the Lord will perfect everything concerning you. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in my face. Sooner or, Sooner or later, God's going to turn it around. Sooner or later, God's going to turn it around. 
church. God's got to suddenly in this coming. He's going to do it. He's turning around for me. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Cast it all to Jesus. Watch him do it. He's turning around for me. God's going to work it out. Come on, y'all. those hands before the Lord he's shifting us church we're building legacy we're building legacy and sometimes you got to go here three months God is my gospel truth three months I've been warned with those three things Eli the beating of stripes and the story I already know and it's been building and building and building and building and this morning he said you got to let it go you got to release that God is shifting this house for blessings. And the Bible said, them that I love, I chasten. If I don't chase you, that means I don't love you. You don't belong to me. He said, if I don't chasten you, you ain't nothing but a bastard. But them that I love, I chasten. Thank God for his chastening. Thank God for his word. It just means he loves us. It just means he loves us. It just means he loves us and holding us accountable. These souls that's at this altar, parents, we're getting ready. Yes, even for our marriage uh, ministry that we're doing crystal clear there's no perfect marriage and and elder q and i aren't trying to have this something like we we have one but you got to do the work and everything about everything that we do is a work in progress and sooner or later god's gonna turn it around you don't stop working at it but sooner or later you don't stop working you don't stop believing parents you don't stop praying for your child you don't give up on them sooner or later sooner or later sooner or later it's gonna turn around it's gonna turn around because they belong to God and they're marked by God so even in our marriage legacy you're welcome to come married couples are welcome to come we're not coming all because we got a perfect marriage we come to find out how to stay together until things get better amen let's give the Lord some praise family legacy legacy of sons and daughters you may have your seat if you can in his presence I need y'all to stay in the worship stay with these young people that's at this altar I take the lives of all of our members, I take it personal. I take the lives of our young people, I take it personal. I take the lives of the new millennials and the millennials and the young adults, I take it personal because there's nothing but promise in front of you. There's nothing but greatness in front of you. And we do what we do so that you stay on course to your assignment and your blessing and your purpose. Hallelujah. We're preparing ourselves for giving those that have it to give. We're preparing our tithes and our offering before the Lord. If you do not have a church home, I want to tell you to just keep coming. Just keep coming. We are What you see is what you get. That's real talk. What you see is what you get. I try hard not to wear two faces, how to have double standards. I try hard not to have any of those things. I get it that we're all in this thing together. We're going to have our oops, bleeps, and blunder, but God remains faithful. And God remains true. And God remains just and honest. And so what we are learning is how to take it all to him bring it all to him and then let him work in our hearts and let him work in our families and let him work in our children and let him work in our marriages that's the way it works that's the way it works so we come together in prayer again July 26 will be our next push service 26 or 27 Saturday 
12 p.m., 27, 27. Our next push service, what are we doing? We're praying until something happens. Prayer is the nucleus. That is the engine, baby, to make things happen. It happens in prayer. Prayer is the nucleus of driving things, shifting things. You give angels strength to fight through your prayers, through your prayers, through your prayers. And let Satan know I didn't forget. I didn't give up and I'm not out. God is going to turn it in my favor sooner or later, sooner or later, because I'm going to pray until something happens. Something is going to turn in my favor. If you need an envelope, please raise your hands. Even if you're sewing by text by giving, we still need you to do an envelope. And there's a red section that you can mark so that we'll know it's already been done. But this is just for our accounting purposes, auditing purposes. It's for you. It's for us. So it keeps the church in, in good standing, knowing that this is not a made-up number. We really do have people you really did give. And you can give account sooner or later. Watch them do it. Sooner or, later, Sooner or later, when you least expect it, watch God. <laughs> Sooner, or Sooner or later, you'll be going about your day and God's going to turn it around. Just sooner or later, hey, you wake up one morning and everything's going to be all right. Sooner or later, Weeping endure for a night. But God's got joy in the morning, sooner or later. You're paying your tithes, you're paying your offering. Uh, we're sowing unto the house of God. Our, uh, our, our uh, summer camp starts tomorrow. Hallelujah. Praise God. It starts tomorrow, right? Yes, yes, yes. Summer camp ages. Eight. Kindergarten through sixth grade. Kindergarten through sixth grade, um, nine to 12 is our summer camp. It starts tomorrow. So you want to bring your children. You want to tell the neighborhood, the community. We're already letting them know. But you can bring your children. It's going to be a great camp like it always is. I thank God for the saints that volunteer out of their summer, out of their time. Uh, we, don't have, um, we don't have novice people. We have professional, educated, educated people that handle our camp. And it's going to be a great camp. We got our young people that are assisting. So tomorrow, tell somebody about our summer camp. Get your kids here from grades K through 6. We're still doing our tithes and our offering. Everything that we do is by giving. Everything that God has allowed us to accomplish in this house is because of the tithers. I appreciate the faithful tithers of this house. I appreciate the tithers that don't take their tithing on vacation, but they tithe. To, amen. Amen. It ain't at Lake Tahoe, and it's not at Yosemite Park and at Six Flags, but it's still here. Wow. How about that? And then God creates discounts and blessings. We are moving for a seed on October 13th, church. Um, I will have something to present to you by then, but but it's it's on. And, and, and again, sooner or later, it's going to turn in our favor. I will never give up on the vision that God have given. Uh, though it tarry, it will speak after a while. Shout after a while. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in our favor. This seed is going towards what the vision is of this house and what we're doing. We're constantly posturing ourselves so that uh, we look good to financial institutions, so that we look good in banks. And these are the kind of sacrifices that it takes. I'm grateful for all the upgrades and things we've done in this house. I will not apologize for that because I like to feel good about coming to church. I want to feel good about your church. Amen. Um, and so uh, many more upgrades to come. There's things we need to do in our parking lot. There's just things we know it all around us that we're doing. Um, what we're telling God and showing God is that we will be faithful over a few things. We're letting God know we honor him for this house. We honor him for blessing us with this house. And we will not treat this house any kind of way, but we will treat this house with dignity and respect and make it the best house that we can to let God know we are appreciative so that God can keep adding on. Amen? Your tithes, your offering is what allows us to do that. This one seed, it is the harvest seed that we're sowing in October. If you have it, it's a seed of $1,000. We're asking October 13th. If you have it, then he's talking to you. If you don't have it, he's not talking to you, but you can pray. You can pray. If you have no means of getting it, then that's okay. You do the best that you can. Those of us that's able to do it, we're asking for 100 people to do it. Those of us that's able to do it, we stand and we can do it because God has enabled us to do it. And those that can't, you come as close as you can and you pray. God blesses you for the desire to give. He blesses the cheerful giver. So October 13th, if you stand with us, we're believing God for some supernatural things, for him to open up some supernatural doors. Here's what I've lived by for 20 years almost in ministry. What doesn't happen by money happens by favor. 
we strive to do what's right, church, when you strive to be just and honest, God will allow you to find favor. And so what money can't do, favor can. All of our tithers are standing. All of our seed sores are standing. We're standing with our seed. We're standing with our seed. We're preparing ourselves. You're welcome to give by credit card. You're welcome to give by check. We ask that your checks are please made out to tip ministries. We ask that your check please kindly be saved, sanctified, and filled in the bank. That's all we ask. Please. We're standing. We're standing. We're standing with our seed. I'm, we're going to do this together. To all of our visitors, again, if you don't have a church home, I want you to just visit. Just keep visiting. See if you feel comfortable. Meet some people. Get around some people. Come to our food and clothes closet. It's amazing on Thursdays to see that line wrapped all the way around and see the people ready to get food. It just blesses me. All of our phenomenal volunteers who work our food and clothes closet, they are amazing. Give it up for that. I mean, seriously, we have an amazing team that works our food and clothes closet and bless. That's how we get our blessings, church. We are blessed because we understand we are blessed to be the blessing. We will always be a giving church, always. And if anything, I want a few more trucks because we want to hit the north, south, east, and west. Y'all got to give a little praise. If anything, if anything, I want us to expand our giving, north, south, east, and west. This is who we are. This is what we do. You're lifting your seed before the Lord. Father, we are so grateful. We are so honored that you have blessed us to give, Father. You are a God that supplies every one of our needs. Father, we stand here not grudgingly, but cheerfully. We're happy that you've blessed us to be able to give. Father, you know every household. You know the need on every household. So, Father, I ask that you would bless according to thy word. Father, may you give back unto us 30, 60, and 100 fold. Lord, allow wealthy men to give unto our bosoms that we may have it to give again. We declare, Father, that there will be no lack in our home. There will be no lack in this ministry. We declare that the kingdom agenda will be fulfilled in Jesus name everybody say amen amen come on sweethearts from all of the building